case you don't know who Rob is, uh, Rob is, you can find him at Twitter, at Thought on Tracks. He yep. is the creator of uh, Thought on Tracks blog, a contributor to Musical Family Tree, and also a cool little uh, blog that, uh, I guess you could call it a blog, uh, Record Geeks. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you call recordgeeks.com? Right now, it's just vinyl pressing reviews, um, and from the beginning, it was supposed to strictly be vinyl pressing reviews, but there's a chance when we overhaul the site in the next few months that it could open up to a blog, kind of celebrating more of uh, the vinyl culture type aspect to it, too, but we'll see. I got my fingers crossed. But. Yeah, well, it's, it's a really cool blog, so or a cool site, I guess I should say, so if... It's kind of the same format of you know your pitchfork.com, but strictly vinyl, which is super cool. So uh, check that out, recordgeeks.com. Um, also, too, Rob, if you want to touch on for those who don't know, um, kind of what you do with Thought on Tracks, kind of how that came about, and then also introduce the listeners to uh, Musical Family Tree who might not know. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I started Thought on Tracks a couple of years ago, pretty much uh, just looking for an avenue to get my writing out there. I was a journalism major by trade, and um, and I needed to get my writing out there in some capacity, so, and I'm really passionate about music. So I started Thought on Tracks just as an effort to get my voice out there in some way, shape, or form. And that kind of snowballed into a much more serious endeavor that Brett actually took part in initially for a long while and helped me run for a long grip. Um, and it snowballed and just kind of turned into this thing. And I ended up meeting a lot of cool people around Indy that were doing other things involved in music. And next thing I knew, Musical Family Tree had an internship opportunity available. And it was a site I had always been passionate about um, they do a great job just focusing solely on Indiana music, and so I just wanted to get involved in any way, shape, or form that I could, and so I was fortunate enough to have John Rogers, who heads up Musical Family Tree, select me for this internship, and I've kind of been just involved as a contributing writer and helping run uh, this summer concert series we've had called Listen Local in Broad Ripple Park all summer long, and doing a few other things, just everything involved with uh, running an online music archive. Yeah, and, and for those who haven't checked it out, if you want to know anything to do with any Indiana musician almost ever, that's your place. Go there. It's amazing. And you you did a site overhaul uh, this summer, too, didn't you guys? Yeah, yeah. We were lucky. We had this uh, really talented intern named Colin Ulin who uh, helped us out. And just the last couple of weeks, we unrolled a bunch of changes to the archive. We're in the process of looking into options to overhauling the blog side of it as well. But yeah, um, we've got playlist functionality, downloading whole albums, just a lot of stuff that was long overdue for the archive uh, is finally coming to fruition now at the end of the summer. So we're all really excited about it. Well, well, it looks great. So, everyone, another plug for a Musical Family Tree. If you are watching this, go check it out. And that might segue me into my uh, – I'm assuming I might know the answer to this, but uh, if there is a show coming up here in the next week or so that uh, people locally in Indianapolis need to be at, uh, what is the show and why, Rob? All right. Well – I guess I'll be selfish and pick tomorrow night's Listen Local concert. It's our last of the summer. Um, we've got Oreo Jones headlining, and he decided he wanted to bring a gang of his friends involved, too. So it's kind of snowballed into this uh, miniature hip-hop showcase. He's got uh, about five other friends, Gray Granite, Freddie Buns, and a few others will be headlining. Um, and then we got a couple punk rock acts opening up in the form of Teenage Strange and No Coast. So it should be like probably the most diverse and eclectic show of the series. It should be a party to close it all out. I'm excited about that. And even if you don't make it out to listen local, you got to go to Cataracts on Saturday because well, Cataracts is just crazy. We'll touch on Cataracts here in a minute because I'm glad you brought it up. It's something I wanted to talk about. Uh, first, uh, Teenage Strange... They're amazing. Great local band. Uh, they play a lot around uh, White, you know, White Rabbit Radio, Radio Fountain Square area. So if you haven't checked those guys out, go see them. And Rob, for those who don't know who Oreo Jones is, how how would you sum him up? How would you how would you describe his live act? Uh, and also, too, I believe he had a tape that just came out. If you want to talk he about did. that as well, 
He did. The tape is called Highway Hypnosis, and it was a collaboration with uh, David Moose Adamson, DMA, who was uh, the former frontman of Juca Box. It's pretty awesome. Um, it's pretty different from the other stuff that he's done. And that's one of the things I love about Oreo. I, was, I, I wrote this preview post for our show this week, and I talked about how Oreo really is kind of like the glue. Like Indian, Indianapolis' music scene can seem pretty fractured at times, but Oreo is just kind of part and friends with everyone in this scene, it seems like. And one week he'll be hanging out in a traditional hip-hop showcase. The next he'll be down in Fountain Square taking in a bunch of punk rock. And he just kind of is this, like, glue between a bunch of the scenes. And so it's really been exciting to see him kind of come into his own and grab a hold of the spotlight in the last couple years. It's been fun to watch. <clears throat> and, I, and I also have to say, like rap music or don't, you got to go to the show if you're from Indianapolis. The guy reps the Pacers harder than probably anybody <laughs> else in the city. So if you're a Pacers <laughs> fan alone, go to the show. I'm sure you'll be cheering by the end of it. Right. And then Cataracts, tell the folks what Cataracts is. I know you last year couldn't shut up about it, so maybe touch <laughs> on last year's show, and then who are some acts that you're pumped to see this year? Sure, yeah. Um, cataracts, what to say about Cataracts? It started as this uh, in kind of impromptu house show a couple of years ago, and I wasn't at the first year, but I was at last year. And uh, last year, so it's at about, let, the past two years, it's been at five different houses in the Fountain Square neighborhood off of Morris Street. And um, last year, I think they were spe expecting a few hundred people to show up. It was well over a thousand. And so you had people just on balconies, on rooftops, just people coming out of the woodwork from every different direction. And it was about 60 different psych rock bands, a few Di different national acts like Gap Dream and a few others uh, out of Nashville and stuff like that came into town for it. And Jacob Gardner, the guy who runs it, um, has really been responsible for picking up the house show scene in Fountain Square the last couple years. And so a lot of these acts are people that he brings through Indy on a different weekly basis that uh, have just become buddies over time and now have agreed to play the show, play his festival um, each summer. So this summer, um, it was originally going to be at Fountain Square Brewery, but they just found out this week that it's going to actually end up down at Garfield Park. So I'm excited to see. Uh, it'll be, it'll definitely be a change of pace uh, from the house shows to you know the pastoral setting of Garfield Park. But they got an awesome stage over there. They're still going to do four multiple stages. It should be a really sweet deal. I'm excited to see it uh, kind of legitimize itself this year. Well, I'm glad, you, I, I'm glad I brought you on because I had n no idea of the change. I would have showed up <laughs> at Fountain Square Brewery, not seen any bands, but probably stayed to have a few beers. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just uh, kind of the neighborhood and police, I think, decided that it was getting too big for the uh, neighborhood uh, plan that they had going so yeah it's been moved down to Garfield Park but I think that might end up being a better location for it anyway so we'll see how it all turns out uh who and now just to end on that who, name a band everyone who goes down to Cataracts has to see who are you most excited for there's a couple Cave is a band out of Chicago that I'm really excited about and then uh Bitchin Bajas is this other band I had actually caught at uh one of Jacob's house shows earlier this year and they just set up this, it looks like they're running like a telephone operation system of synthesizers, and it's just these two guys staring at each other making the weirdest beats you've never heard of. But uh, it's a really fun time. And then there's countless local awesome Indiana acts that are going to be there. Apache Dropouts, uh, definitely a can't-miss show. And there's a lot of others that are great, too. Awesome. So everybody get down to Cataracts, Garfield Park. It's going to be an awesome time. What, how many bands is that total? Do you know? I think it's under fifty this year. I want to say, but wow. yeah, it's 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 a It's definitely in that forty plus range. So it, it's there's plenty of music to be heard. I think it kicks off at eleven a.m. and then we'll go probably until the park has to close up at ten p.m. that night. Awesome, awesome. And uh, the last kind of musical thing I want to touch on, uh, just kind of gently, I saw you put up a post of your. Favorite, you had a, a Warm Fest playlist, oh, yeah. and 
Warm Fest is is going on, and, and our good friends at uh, my old Kentucky blog are putting that on. MOKB presents. Uh, really cool. I think one of the first music fests to go on here in Indianapolis, outside of Cataracts. Um, a lot of cool acts in there. Uh, it, on the, if someone's checking out your playlist, who do they have to turn to? Who who would you put at the top of that playlist right now? Oh, man, there's a bunch of people. Yeah, the playlist I made for MFT was all the local acts on the bill. And, uh, as again, being an MFT guy, you can't go wrong with any of those. But, yeah, there's a bunch of great acts, and uh, I, I completely agree with what you said. It's uh, been a long time coming for Indy to take this next step and kind of move towards a bigger festival model. And I think they got the right people running it. It goes for a great cause to support White River Arts and Music. And uh, and so, yeah, it's going to be over Labor Day weekend. I think it's awesome that it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday deal over that weekend instead of having to rush out of work on Friday to try to get there. But, yeah, there's just a bunch of great local acts. The Pieces are reuniting after a really long time. Oh, wow, yeah. That show, so I'm excited about that. But, yeah, there's a bunch of great acts on that lineup. Awesome, awesome, and I'm sure in, in the next episode with whoever it is, haven't decided yet, so Rob, again, you're the first one, so... <laughs> I'm happy to be the guinea of... pig, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, w one other question um, I wanted to ask you, actually two more questions. Sure. What, have you been to the uh, Joyful Noise recording store yet? Yes, I have. Um, it's actually friends of ours that ha uh, friends of MFT that have been helping with our set design stuff for the Listen Local series, Brain Twins. They also do a bunch of the artwork for the Joyful Noise website and uh, help them out with a lot of different things. They're the ones running the record store, and yeah, it's awesome. It's in the Murphy Building, kind of tucked away in this corner, right around the corner from uh, Joyful Noises Space, if you're familiar with that, with any sort of First Friday stuff that they've had going on over the last couple years. Um, but yeah, it's just tucked away in this corner and is an awesome space to go grab your local music. It's great to have a decent record spot down there in Fountain Square now. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm, I'm excited. I, it's on my to-do list to check out uh, this weekend. And uh, we talk a lot about vinyl here, so one way or the other it comes up, so uh, sure. I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited to, to see it. Okay, so the final question is, uh, to put you on the spot, restaurant, store, knick-knack place, uh, anything, what has been the coolest uh, local business establishment you've been in recently and why? Hmm, that's tough. I, I guess I'll go with Old Faithful and uh, choose... Luna Music, man. You can't go wrong with Luna Music. I just love the kids they have working. Or I say kids, they're all my around my age. Um, but I love the guys they have working in there. They always have the best music recommendations. They're great to follow on social media if you're a big fan of vinyl porn like I am probably Brett is. They come with great pictures of uh, their latest releases and all that stuff. So Luna Music's just an institution. I think it's one of the best record stores in the Midwest, if not the country. So it's awesome that we have it right here and uh, just south of Broad Ripple off 52nd and College. I will 100% agree, and it's awesome that you have friends around the Midwest that when they hit Indianapolis, the first thing you got to do is go to Luna Music and you ask them why is because we can't get these records where we live. So that's pretty cool. And it's again, a good feeling. It is. And, it, and again, to <laughs> echo off the staff, the staff is amazing. You go in there, they're like your buddies. Uh, I believe it was, uh, actually I don't believe, I, I know it was Chris, and you can follow him at uh, Sad Sports Guy on Instagram is a, a good follow there. Um, he recommended Mac DeMarco to me about a year and a half ago, and the rest is history. Uh, we all love Mac DeMarco. So. Oh, yeah. Well, Rob, you, you did it. Your time is up. It. You're off the I'm hot seat. <laughs> uh, you, you survived. It, I guess it for it wasn't a complete train wreck. I don't think. I think we got some good content. So thanks again for uh, joining. Yeah, no problem, brother. Happy to do it. Yeah, and and there'll be links to uh, Rob's stuff, uh, Musical Family Tree, Record Geeks, Thought on Tracks, on the blog post. And again, shoot Rob some tweets. He'll get back to you at Thought on Tracks on Twitter. But uh, uh, thanks again, Rob, for making the the first blog post on Indian Gauge uh, somewhat successful. Thanks for having me, Brad. I'll see you soon, buddy. See you, man. See you.